All right, today we are going to talk about a subject that is not near and dear to my heart. I hate it, absolutely hate it, dishes. I hate buying it, I hate researching it, I hate photographing it, I hate listing it, and yep, I definitely hate shipping it. So why in the world would I continue to pick up dishes? Well, the simple truth is, is that I get them at very low price point and the profit capability is huge. When you go out to the thrift stores, yard sales and estate sales, and you can buy whole sets of china, we are talking sometimes over a hundred matching pieces for under $10. How can I turn my back on that? I just can't do it. I am just too much of a businesswoman to turn my back on that kind of profit. So I put my big girl pants on and buy the china. So today we're gonna to talk about what kind of china I pick up, why I pick it up, and how I sell it. Basically, when I first started selling on eBay, I was lavender clothesline, which I still am, and I only sold clothing. And then more and more, I picked up accessories and then onto hard goods. And in the beginning, I started seeing China, whole sets of it, sometimes 90 to 100, over 100 pieces for $20. And you know, that math calculator in my head was going very quickly and I still resisted. But then after a while, when I found whole sets of China for under $10, I just dove in and went for it. So let me say in the beginning, when I first started sourcing China, I was crazy enough to pick up whole sets of it and sell whole sets of it, sell it together as a set. I'm gonna say by year three, I was picking up pieces of China equaling for the set, probably over a hundred pieces and shipping them. Yep, and it was crazy. A lot of times the boxes for that China were two and three large boxes and the buyer always paid shipping, but the amount of time and packing material that went into those items was crazy. Now I always build the cost of my packing material and my time into whatever I sell. I always account for that and I did back then too. But I have found that it is much better to break up sets of china and sell it that way, which truthfully I hate doing. When you see an antique set of Limoges china from France, you know, and it's the whole set and it's beautiful, you try your best to keep it together as a set. That would be my number one desire, is to sell the whole set and sell it locally and just meet the buyer someplace and let them look at it that way. I have sold, I'm trying to think what the other brand was. It might've been Limoges, I don't think it was. You know what it was? It was Royal Albert, the old country roses. I've sold very large sets of that. That was probably 150 pieces. And I bought that on OfferUp, so I bought it local photographed it, sold it right back, same platform. And I believe I got almost $200. So I turned that initial $15 purchase for that set into 200 within, I think a week or two that took me. Okay, so this China here, I picked up, I'm gonna say two large boxes of it. And this I paid $7.50. So this is the pattern, you can see that. And I love when it's very clearly marked. Let me get it away from the ring light. How's that? This is Bavaria Echt, E-C-H-T. I'm not sure how we say that, Echt Cobalt. So the Cobalt is the blue. I guess I could look up E-C-H-T and see what that stands for. Don't even bother in the English. Schumann, Arsberg, Germany. So really pretty, blue roses. This has a textured lattice panel there if you can see it and we are talking i got a huge amount of this i didn't really count the pieces to be truthful but i have stacks of this stuff so what i do is the first thing i do is go through all of the china that i bring home and check for flaws a lot of times i will just discard flaws unless it's something like this here is the teapot and look how beautiful that is now this teapot does have a flaw it has, you probably won't be able to see this, it has a crack in the glaze. The crack is not in the wall of the, of the pottery of the china, 
but it is in the in the glaze and I'll denote that but I would never get rid of a piece like this unless it was totally destroyed unless it had big damage to the spout or the top but other than that crack in the glaze this is in really good shape so I went ahead and listed it so what I do when I bring home china is I go through it all first and get rid of anything that is heavily damaged. The next thing that I do is put everything into its category, luncheon plates, cake plates, bread plates, finger bowls, you know, on and on, dinner plates. And I see how many of each item I have. So when I put them into those categories, like here is a soup bowl, which I will also call a pasta bowl or a salad bowl. If I can fit all of those keywords in the title, I will put the original use, as far as I can tell, as the first keyword. So I give the branding and then I'll put soup, salad, um, probably salad bowl, and then give the dimensions across. All of that goes right in the keywords. So. While China is not as heavily popular as it was, I'm going to say, 20 years ago, China still does sell. In my opinion, it's just a very long tail item. So if you're a quick flipper on eBay, you probably don't want to sell China unless you really have your hands on something spectacular. One of the items that I was thrilled to sell or one of the patterns was a Limoges, France, I want to say I just had the luncheon plates and they had fish on them. Beautiful. So if you ever find China and it has a gorgeous painted, hand painted fish design, you want to look those up. A lot of times those can bring good money. You know, there are plenty of dishes that bring very high amounts. Most of it, I'm gonna venture a guess and say it's antique. We're talking mid 1800s antique. I do go ahead and put everything into category and count how many I have of each piece. Let's say I have six luncheon plates. I will go ahead and list those six together. I try to keep my lots of things in even numbers with the minimum being six. I like to see there's at least six dinner plates, six sandwich plates or luncheon plates, and so on and so forth. So I'll give you this example. I have 12 perfect condition. I'm gonna call these probably a sandwich plate or a cake plate. Now, while I won't spend a lot of time researching what the original purpose of the plate is after a while you get to know in dishes what something would have been used for so i'm thinking this is probably i don't know six inches across and these are listed already i probably called this i'm going to guess either a cake plate dessert plate you know that type of thing i'm going to give you a comparison so you can see here is the dinner plate, and this is this plate. Now this one is the Schumann, and is this the Schumann? It is, because I have a couple of other patterns going on here too. So beautiful dishes. I don't know that a lot of people are still entertaining with fine bone china or china you cannot put in the dishwasher, but like I said, I'm a long tail seller. So for me to get hundreds of pieces of china at such a ridiculously low price, if I sell one lot of what I'm selling, I've made profit and the rest is free. See my thinking that way? So let's just cover quickly how I'm shipping these. When I sell dishes, cups, whatever they are, and it is a breakable, I am wrapping two pieces of tissue paper around it, putting a piece of tape, then it's going into bubble wrap, two wraps of bubble wrap tape and then each item let's say i'm shipping these dishes so this is all wrapped in tissue paper and it is also wrapped in its bubble wrap i then put packing peanuts as spacers and put the next plate on top packing peanuts space so that it builds up into a stack of wrapped plates with packing peanuts as spacers in between. Does all of that make sense? I hope it does. And then in the end, I wrap it 
with one more piece of bubble wrap and tape the whole thing together. That way, no matter what happens in shipping, the plates can't bang against each other. To me, that is probably the highest rate of damage are the items that hit against each other in the box. When you're sending China in the mail, UPS, FedEx, whatever shipping service you're using, you want to make sure that between the edge of your plate and the wall of the box is at least, I'm going to say at least a minimum three inches, and you're padding that with something. A lot of times I am using um, the foam pool noodles that I recently showed. I will build those as columns around the perimeter of the box so that no matter which way the box tilts, if this was to slide inside, it would hit against a pool noodle. But don't forget, it has plenty of packing around it also. So I will use those. I also pack with a lot of packing peanuts. Guys, I'm buying packing peanuts, swimming pools of them. But that's because I want my item to get to the buyer safely. And if you're going to sell and ship dishes, you really have to be prepared with the proper size boxes, with all of the packing materials, and just to make it easier on yourself because shipping dishes is a lot of work in my opinion. But like I said, if you're getting sets of 80, 90, 100 dishes at a time and you're paying such a small amount of money, the profit capability is huge. Now two things. Why are the thrift stores and estate sales, not so much the estate sales, a lot of times the dishes there are higher in my opinion, but why are the thrift stores selling China at such a low price point? Number one, I feel they don't put the research into what names they have. They don't realize Limoges from France is, is you know, higher quality than something from Pier 1. They just see dishes. They just see China. They're not looking up all of the patterns. So on our part, we have to do that work and start to get to know what China is going to bring your higher dollar amount. And number two, it takes up a lot of room on their shelves. If they have three huge boxes with you know 30 to 40 pieces of matching china in a box, they just want rid of it. They got it for free and they just want it out of their store. So a lot of times I just have to put on blinders and stop picking up dishes if I have a lot going on because it's labor intensive, but a lot of times I'm still saying yes to dishes. Okay, so this part of the video, I'm just gonna show you parts to this set and a few other pieces that were slipped in the box that came along with it. Yes, please. So like I showed you already, I'm gonna call this a cake or a dessert plate. I also have a plate, I believe that's an inch bigger and that would be a luncheon plate. So I would do luncheon salad, those words together, cake, dessert, um, probably those two words together. Nine and a half, ten 10 inches is almost always a dinner plate. There's not really much else you can do with that terminology. Here are bowls. They're beautiful. Gold trim around the edge. Now the back of these does not say whether this is 22 karat gold. I imagine that it's probably, but I wouldn't put it unless it is marked 22 karat gold trim. But these are in gorgeous condition. This is a shallow bowl. I believe the original purpose for these when they were made uh, was probably soup. So this is a soup bowl, but I will also call it salad and pasta. I don't even know if in the older sets they had pasta bowls. I don't think that was a thing. I think we eat a lot more pasta nowadays than they did when these bowls were made. I do also have a few serving pieces here. So this is a bowl, and I would probably call this a vegetable, a serving vegetable bowl. So we'll use those two terms, and there's the back. Next up, I have this. It's an oval platter. This was meant for serving and same marking. And you can see I've put an inventory sticker on it because I have two different sizes. I have this size and a larger size, I believe. And then within the same box came a different set of dishes. Not a whole set. I just got a few pieces of this. And this is... It's again with the Echt Cobalt, but this is Delft and it just says Bavaria. 
So it does not have, it could be the same factory that made these and it could be the same um, branding, the same company, but I don't know that for sure. So when I list China, because I don't know a lot about China, I only list what's on the back. That way, a buyer who is very knowledgeable won't receive the dishes and say, hey, you said this was a blah, 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 and I didn't know what I was talking about. So I said yes to this, came with a set. Now with that last piece, I got this shallow bowl. This to me almost seems like a fruit bowl, but I could be wrong about that. I mean, this could have been serving vegetables or what else would this be for? I don't even know. Um, and this matches, this is the Delft and it's numbered on the back. It's stamp numbered and hand numbered. Now I'm not saying a lot of these dishes are gonna bring, you know, hundreds of dollars. They are not. When you look at these dishes, a bowl like this would probably bring, I'm gonna guess 25 to $30. But remember, I paid, you know, very little for all of it. So still a great profit. Another thing when sourcing China that you really wanna watch for is any kind of damage. Remember that the people that had this in their home, it might have gotten damaged, and then the people bring it to the thrift store, might have gotten damaged, and then you bring it home. So each piece really needs to be carefully checked. You wanna rub your hand along the edge of it and along the bottom rim especially, because that's where the majority of the damage happens. But also in the glaze, there is crazing. Crazing is like a crackle look underneath um, it's not through the bowl. Crazing is like a crackle finish in the glaze or the paint of the bowl. I believe a lot of times crazing happens because of temperature or moisture change. So naturally these do not go in the oven, they do not go in the dishwasher. This is all hand wash, but you wanna denote in the listing if there's crazing in the item. Now I've sold quite a few dishes with crazing. Some people just want these dishes to put them in their hutch for display. They're really not gonna use these. It's more like a decoration in their house or a collection. So while they will buy items with crazing, I find they don't buy a lot of items with any kind of big damage. It also came with this gravy boat and the underplate is attached. So that's one piece. You want to say when this is two pieces and when this is one piece that matters to people. So this is considered a gravy or a sauce boat. And again, this is the Schumann. Really pretty. Blue and white is always a popular color theme. So quite a few of the dishes I've left downstairs in my inventory. I just brought these up to show you guys, but I thought these were very unique. Look at these little triangular dishes. <laughs> here we go. I always have to, whenever I have two of something, I have to try it as earrings. Um, Bavaria. And these have a little bit of a different marking on the back. See how this one is a little bit? I imagine that's two different years these were made. And I'm not quite sure what the use of this is. So there it is. You can tell by my hand quite little. I'm either going to guess that this is a salt cellar. So salt cellar is C-E-L-L-A-R, where when you sat down to dinner, every guest was given their own little salt dish and they, you know, just sprinkled salt on their food. But other than that, I've got nothing. I guess it could be a waste bowl that if you had little pits from olives or, you know, a stem from a cherry that you were eating at dessert, you put it in your individual waste bowl. That's my guess. If you guys have any kind of thought or if you know dishes and you know what this bowl might have been, I'd love to have you leave a comment down below. My only other thought is a trinket dish, but I don't know if these type of dishes crossed over to non-serving food items. I don't think so, but I could be wrong about that. All right, now I'm just gonna show you a few more pieces that were in the boxes and I didn't know I was buying, but I got them and I was thrilled. So this first item is this beautiful fruit tray. I'm thinking it was probably used for fruit since it has the fruit pattern, but I think this could have been for something else, maybe garnishes, you know, like a crudite, maybe bread, I don't think so. I think they would have kept bread warm, but I could be wrong about that. So this is what it looks like. 
Now, as you can tell, this is a totally different set from the blue set, but it came in the boxes and great, I'll take it. This is Munich, uh, Royal Munich, Marseille, Bavaria, and it has some letters, Z, S, and G. That is what that looks like. Gold trim, again, gold paint, beautiful condition. But again, I don't think this is gonna bring much, but you know, I kinda got it for free. It came with the other stuff, so I'm not gonna say, hey, I'm not listing that. Anytime there's a slowdown with sales, you really want to list as much as you can. So whether it's during the summer, my lowest producing month is traditionally August. I do track my sales to know when to take my vacation, which usually I take it in July, another slow month. July and August are my two slowest months. But when we're having a slowdown in our sales on eBay, that's the time you really want to dig your heels in and list as much as you can to make Make that engine turn to make it pump over so you can be sure during this hard time of all the stores shut down and everybody you know kind of seeing what's going to happen in life you can be sure I'm on it I'm listing and my sales have quieted down normally on any given day 365 days a year I sell about $300 worth that's what my store sells I, I don't make that kind of money but uh, lately I've been selling probably between 100 and 150 so right now I'm doing about about 50% of my normal sales, but I'm not worried about it. I know things will turn around. I know the economy will improve. It's just cycles that we go through. And eBay is a very cyclical platform. All the selling platforms are. So you get used to it as you sell more and more. All right, and the last item that I wanna show, I'm gonna see if I can hold a couple of these. Grab a couple of these. Our little adorable teacups with pastel colors inside. How sweet are these? And they come, let's see, gonna hook it on there, with the little plates. So these I have in green, yellow, pink, a lighter pink, and it looks like that's it. I have uh, six of them, and these are the plates, and they have this maker's mark. Well, let me put the cups down so I don't break them. I can show you the plate better and the markings. And there are the markings. So it is a marking of a crown and something. I don't even know what that is, a crest of some sort. It does have a serial number. It says England and on the back. Now, how do we tell what these are, what brand they are? You actually have to put what you see into a Google search and look for maker's marks. So this one, I would put in England, crown, and that might be a W. So that's where I would start, and you scroll through the marks, the China marks, to see if you can find your mark. Now, I did do these two days ago. I've forgotten which one it is. I wanna say this is Foley, F-O-L-E-Y. Mm, I can't remember the other two names. It, it's in my eBay store, because I've listed these already. How sweet are these? Really, really sweet. And one of the ways to tell really nice china, I believe this is bone china, is you hold it up to the light. So if you hold beautiful china up to the light and you put your hand behind it, you can see your hand right through the china. So I'm not sure if that's always bone china, but it's a porcelain, virtuous porcelain bone. I don't know the differences between them all. Um, it is from the type of clay that they're made from, from the type of porcelain. We'll give it that name. So as you can see, I am no expert, but Finding China, a lot of times there's an inner groan. I'm like, oh, China. And some of you guys have been great. You're like, then why do you buy it? I buy it because the money that you make from it is very good. Let me just reiterate, selling China is not for the quick flip. Sometimes China will sit in my store for two or three years. Yep. Recently, I picked up a very large lot of um, antique Limoges, France, you know, from France, China, the real stuff, gorgeous, pristine. And I put it on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and OfferUp, and I made it local pickup only on all three platforms. And I, well, I got a few bites, I did not sell it. So now, after a certain amount of time, I think it's been about, I'm gonna say six weeks to two months, what I do is I take those listings down and I break up the set, which I didn't wanna do. That set, I believe, had 90, to say 97 pieces in it 
gorgeous, stunning. You can see it in my uh, store if you wanna see what it looks like, or I'll try to insert a photo here. Beautiful, and I believe I got that whole set for $7. So I will have to sit on it, I'll wait, but it's not bothering me. It's downstairs in my basement. I don't pay you know, any kind of fees for storage. My basement is all climate controlled, so it's not like it changes greatly in temperature or moisture level. I very much monitor my basement climate because I store all of my stuff down there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little China talk. Just wanted to encourage you, I don't know a lot, but if you like China and you don't mind being a long tail seller, it's something that you might wanna consider. So thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe and go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.